This is the sound every weekday morning that changes our children's lives. The Board of Education says children first. Hmm. That is not true. They need to change that slogan because our children do not feel it. Do not feel it at all. They it's a big business. See, educators don't run the, the, the system. Before it was educators running the system. Now we got business in right. And so they think in business savvy. I need to dump these schools because they're not bringing us any money. So when I see people talking about this is a business, I've been in business. A school is not a business. Save our school! Save our school! Save our school! In 2010, Save schools from around the nation were faced with closures, consolidation, and turnarounds. This is the story of one school and one neighborhood that chose to fight back. Guggenheim opened its doors on the corner of 71st and Morgan in 1962, some 48 years ago. It has been a staple of the community. Though the neighborhood of Inglewood has changed a lot since then, one thing remains the same, and that's the support and loyalty of an institution that is fighting to the very end to stay open. I got a prayer that I'm going to pray that this school will not be closed. And I believe God that whatever the reason is, I don't know the reason, but whatever the reason is, that God will move in it, that God will supply the needs that this school will remain open, because this is an asset to this neighborhood. Yes. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition of SOS is an internationally recognized signal of distress, a call or request for help or rescue. Many schools in the Chicago public school system are calling for help. This is their SOS. More than a dozen Chicago public schools get a failing grade. 14 elementary and high schools will be closed consolidated or given new staff and teachers as part of an overhaul plan that was announced today. Some statistics are challenged by qualified people who care. I first saw the data that they used to identify the school that's failing. I was appalled because all, in, in all the years I was at the school, 34 years, and in 34 years, our school was never identified as a failing school. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, our school was a model school. And we had people from all over the world, I mean the world, that visited the school because of our novel approach to education. We were one of the first schools to implement the research on, ba on brain-based learning. And uh, when, when I heard that the school was gonna uh, close because of poor performance, and I looked at the data that the board was using, I knew that, that, that this couldn't be accurate. They had As a filmmaker and former student of Guggenheim, I knew this story had to be told, and so did many others. So I have to say we've got to fight this, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you documented because we're going to do this. On the evening of February 3rd, 2010, the night of the CPS board hearing, I walked the hallways of my former school greeted by respectful smiles from everyone associated. The gymnasium was empty and I wonder if I were in the correct place. I saw the posters on the wall created by the students urging that everyone do all they could to save their school. Would the community put up a battle? Would they turn out to voice their displeasure over the proposed closure? Soon, 
I would have answers to my many questions. One by one they came, parents and grandparents, current students and alumni, principals, teachers, and staff covering many years of service. What was once an empty place is now standing room only. Guggenheim, like an underdog in a heavyweight championship bout, was ready. Let's get ready to rumble! Despite the many odds they faced. In speaking with many parents, they voiced concern over appointed moderator Fred Bates, who had previously stopped a similar hearing at Curtis Elementary School when frustrated parents showed their displeasure. These fears of the Guggenheim parents were amplified when immediately before the hearing, Mr. Bates was making excuses on why it may end abruptly. I will tell you, I am feeling a bit under the weather this evening. For those of you who were there Monday, you will probably tell I'm a little more subdued. So we are not going to go past 7.30. <clears throat> I have some medication I need to get that I failed to take before I came here. Ironically, the students were to have major testing the following morning, but this didn't seem to be of concern to Mr. Bates the very person whose recommendation helps decide the school's fate. This is an opportunity for public comment regarding the CEO's recommendation. It is not an opportunity for questions and answers. I am not a representative of CPS. I do not work for CPS. I do not work for the board. I do not have answers to your questions. Never accept a no from someone that cannot tell you yes. No one in that room last night could tell us yes. So who are we talking to? And by his own admission, he had to say, every question you're asking is rhetorical. So this isn't a hearing. This is just a, a listening and a, and, and a reporting. This is, this right here is, is, is purely a, a, a fraud and, a, uh, and, and an optical illusion as if the children and the parents are being heard or want to be heard. No one in there could hear us. Not hold these kids to the same standards upper and middle class. They are on a different playing field, especially when the playing field is not even. Those kids in upper and middle classes, they have computers, they have, they have uh, art, they have music, they have extra uh, prep classes. The students at the schools in England and Southside, this is not the case. Um, we talk about, they, they want to talk that, that Southside and Inglewood is such a bad neighborhood and there are gangs. Well, you know what? I could see a child turning to a gang because the very institutions that our forefathers fought for, Martin Luther King, uh, are being destroyed. If it takes a village to raise a child, then CPS is destroying the village. The following day, I had the privilege of speaking with national spokesman of Rainbow Push, Jonathan Jackson. Everything that you're saying is absolutely natural. Absolutely. That given the opportunity, the children live up to those expectations and understanding. What's normal here is to get all the resources cut out, and then before you know it, if someone has a test, the question has become, what are you trying to measure? And unfortunately, you're going to achieve whatever you're trying to measure because you can cater it for those final results. They're not trying to measure the growth of the child. They're simply trying to justify closing the school. Yeah, and so these stories that you're sharing, I hear it so often. Many of these schools produce some of the finest CEOs and executives mm -hmm. that uh, came out of the Chicago public school Absolutely. system, went to uh, become chief executives of corporate headquarters in Chicago and around the world. And now these are the same buildings that they say are failing. And I primarily say is that a school by definition cannot fail. Schools where you gain instruction, and we know education works. So the system is failing the students. The students aren't failing. They're failing in the system, but the system has failed them. And Dr. Nancy Ellis, former principal and school teacher of Guggenheim. My best emotion is sadness for the kids. Sadness for the kids. I can feel that their agony and their pain. And uh, just, just anger, you know, just anger that People uh, have such disregard. The fact that they would uh, make the announcement, the pronouncement, a week before standardized testing, just angers me so much. And the fact that they would say such hurtful things to those young people about uh, about their school 